Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom, and right now you can get this sweet scoop soldier sticker when you order over at cardkingdom.com. Just mention in your order notes that you want a scoop soldier sticker when you go to check out. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and we have some big news today. Today, we got a double video. First off, we have the full spoiler for Commander Collection Green. Wizards dump the entire thing, it is pretty spectacular, and as a bonus, we also get our first daily dose of Commander Legend spoilers, with a bunch of new cards spoiled from that as well. So we got a ton to talk about, all Commander focus today, and we're going to jump right into it, starting with Commander. Commander Legends, and Commander Legends, it's releasing the beginning of November. November 6th, there's a pre-release on the 30th, although not exactly sure what that's going to look like. And just as a refresher, this set, the idea is, not only is it going to dump a bunch of reprints and new cards into Commander, but it's also going to have this, like, Commander draft format. So uh, definitely check that out. We got a little article up on the site talking about it if you want to hear more about the draft format. But our focus today is a new card, starting with what was the most exciting new card I think Wizards talked about today, which is Keeper of the Accord. So Keeper of the Accord, another attempt at giving white card advantage, four mana, three, four human soldier at the beginning of each opponent's end step. If that player controls more creatures than you, you get a 1-1 one, one soldier token, and at the beginning of each opponent's end step, if they control more lands than you, you can tutor your library for a basic planes, put it onto the battlefield tab. So in theory, Keeper of the Accord, every single turn can be making you three one one, one soldiers and netting you three lands. Although, uh, honestly, it's not going to go for long with the lands or the soldiers for that matter, because once you ramp a few times, you're going to get as many lands as your opponents and not be able to search anymore. But this is a pretty insane source of card advantage for white. And Wizards mentioned on the stream about Commander Legends that they're doing a bunch of new things. And they know that white has a problem in Commander. They know that card advantage is the biggest problem and white needs ways to draw cards, but they want to keep those ways white. So they said over the next few years, expect a lot of new attempts, and they cited Mingara the Diplomat as maybe the first of those attempts, so Keeper of the Accord is kind of the next in that line, a way to generate card advantage in your mono-white commander deck that still feels very white, and this one does. Uh, white has a theme over its history of caring about what your opponent's doing, and then you can benefit based off that. Keeper of the Accord is right on par with the rest of those cards, and I think this one is actually pretty powerful. The token-making ability, it reminds me a little bit of a video answer how you can make some tokens with Keeper of the Accord. And of course, you're going to stop making tokens because eventually you have a bunch of creatures, but if you can use those tokens for value, maybe chump blocking, sacrificing, then you can keep making more and more tokens. So the possibilities are pretty endless if you build around it. And then as far as lands, you kind of get a Knight of the White Orchid, but you get it every one of your opponent's end steps, which is incredibly powerful. Maybe you start off behind lands, you can play Keeper of the Accord, you catch back up in lands very quickly over the course of like one turn cycle, you can potentially catch back up with your opponents, and then if your opponents ramp or anything, you get to ramp again, get another land, which is kind of generating card advantage in its own weird way. So I think keep your record definitely another good attempt at giving white card advantage. I think this is a pretty playable card. Like, I think it's especially appealing for mono white where you struggle with card advantage but really, this is just a good card in multiple ways. Definitely think that this can see play in multiple commander decks especially mono white decks. As far as the lands from Commander Legends. This is something people have been waiting on and waiting because fetch lands, we know they're coming this year. That was a rumor. We got the land cycle from Commander Legends and it is the return of the Battle Bond land. So honestly, I don't want to sound disappointed. These lands are great and we really needed the rest of the cycle. They come into play untapped as long as you have two or more opponents. So in Commander, they're essentially just always coming to play untapped. They are a great land cycle. One of the sweetest and most powerful and hopefully most budget friendly land cycles Wizards has printed specifically for Commander formats, multiplayer formats in a long time. Obviously, they're not fetch lands. They're not worth as much as fetch lands. But out of all the non fetch land land cycles, that Wizards could have put into the set, and out of all the new land cycles uh, Wizards could have put in the set, outside of doing something crazy like, I don't know, snow-covered original Alpha Beta Duels or something, uh, this is a really solid option. So these lands will have value, they will see play, they're not quite tip-top tier lands as far as Commander play, they rank behind the Shock lands, and the Fetch lands, and maybe the Buddy lands, some of the Tri lands, but it's a very playable cycle, and hopefully this reprinting in Commander Legends will have 
have enough supply that they're going to be accessible, cheap, maybe even budget friendly, and they're also coming with full art promos. Of course, Commander Legends, like every other set these days, gonna have collector boosters, gonna have extended art cards, all of those shenanigans that we'll learn more about as we get closer to the set. But while not being fetch lands is disappointing, as I said, out of all the non fetch land cycles Wizards could have chosen, completing the Battle Bond cycle, definitely a really great choice and a really awesome option for Commander players. We also got, oh, speaking of returns, the return of Sengur, which is sweet, the return of Partners, which that makes me a little bit more nervous. You're seeing two versions here. This is another one of the promos. There's going to be promos and non-promo versions of the legends in the set. There's alternate borders. There's all kinds of different printings. But Sanger the Dark Baron, pretty interesting card. So, 6 mana 4-4 four, four flying. Whenever another creature dies, put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Whenever a player loses a game, you gain life equal to the player's life total when the turn began. So, if someone dies from, yeah, 40, you'll gain 40 life. If they're at 1 life, then you'll gain 1 life. Uh, so, life gain plus plus 1 plus 1 counters. Most importantly and impactfully, Singer of the Dark Baron has Partner, and you probably remember this mechanic. Partner, one of the most busted commander mechanics of all time. It does make me a little nervous that we're seeing more partners. Just generic partner with anything partners. Tends to get around the color pie to some extent. Tends to invalidate old commanders. Personally, I'm not a fan of the partner mechanic, but Sanger, it is a sweet card. It calls back to the original Baron Sanger, which got a plus two, plus two counter whenever a creature died. Uh, of course, we don't have plus two, plus two counters anymore. So two plus one, plus one's close enough, but a nice callback to the original Baron Sanger. As far as the partner aspects of Sanger, we know there's a ton coming in Commander Legends proper. I think Wizard said 41 new partners are coming, which means there's going to be over 1,500 different partner combinations. It's just an infinite number of partner combinations. But out of the partners that already exist in Magic, there's not a ton that are obviously synergistic with Sengir. I think uh, Ishai could be interesting. Play up the plus one, plus one counter theme. I mean, a creature dies, Sengir gets two plus one, plus one counters, an opponent gets a spell, Ishai gets plus one, plus one counters. So maybe some sort of like Esper plus one, plus one counters. That could be cool. Esper proliferate or something. Also, Tana would be an interesting possibility, making a bunch of tokens and then maybe sacrificing them to Woe Strider, Ashnod's Altar, growing Sanger really big, getting the Voltron kill. So there's not a ton of obvious partner pairings, but again, we got a ton more partners on the way. The other place that Sanger could show up is just Vampire Dex. It is a vampire. Vampire Noble, if that's relevant. But it is a vampire, so maybe like Edgar Markov, Olivia likes to kill creatures and is a vampire. So Sanger... I really like this card. I don't think it's busted, apart from maybe the partner aspects. Partners just tend to be more powerful than they look in general because of the partner mechanic getting around commander attacks, having two commanders instead of one, all that stuff, color pie, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But as a card, I don't think Sager is like a busted card, but it is powerful. You can do aristocrat shenanigans, sacking stuff, getting a bunch of counters, getting the Voltron kill. It's a vampire. It's a cool callback to a really sweet old vampire. One of the OG vampires of magic. So so even though I don't think this card's super busted, I like it, and I think it's fun and very flavorful. We also got some more partners. So these partners, I don't think they're mostly super playable, but they're notable for a couple of reasons. One is Alana and Halana. These are partners that are uncommons, and it shows off that we're getting uncommon legends in Commander Legends. Uh, so Alana... 5 mana, 4 3, first strike, partner. You can tap into add a mental red mana equal to the greatest power among creatures you control to enter the battlefield this turn. More on that in a minute. I think Alana could actually be pretty busted. Halana, on the other hand, just kind of like a weird removally partner. And then the Prismatic Piper. This is a weird one. A very weird one. 5 mana, 3 3, no color, shapeshifter. So all creature types, all colors potentially. If it is your commander, you get to choose a color before the game, and it is that color. So you can use this as a partner to essentially add any color to any partner pairing, which is pretty interesting. The reason it exists is to make sure people can actually draft the set, because in Draft of Commander Legends, you do have to have commanders or partnered commanders. You do have to abide by color pie restrictions. So this is essentially to make sure that people can play all the cards in their draft deck. I don't 
like it has much relevance outside of draft, although who knows? I guess maybe there's some partner pairing that would take advantage of it. Out of these cards, I think they're not super relevant, except for Alana. Alana is actually pretty exciting. The ability to tap to add mana equal to the greatest power among creatures that came into play under your control this turn is really scary in decks that have big creatures. You're playing like Perforos or Dracuseth or Ilharag. These decks are built around putting massive creatures into play. You could be consistently tapping Alana for 7 mana, 10 mana, some massive amount of mana, and this gets even scarier if you throw untapped shenanigans into the fix. Maybe you got Seize the Day. Untaps a creature, gives you another combat phase, can even flash it back. Imagine having a 7 power creature or 10 power creature come into play. You tap Alana, make 10 mana, then you seize the day with three of that mana, untap Alana. Then you tap Alana, make ten more mana. Then you flash back, seize the day, untap it, do it again. You're making absurd amounts of mana. So I think there's combo potential here with Alana. And I think it's actually a very powerful card. So definitely excited to see what shenanigans could happen with Alana and Commander. We also got Prosh Sky Raider of Kerr. And this is another promo printing. They're doing a new kind of foiling that is coming with some of the promos in Commander Legends. But it's called Etch foiling. It's kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh-esque in some ways. It does look pretty sweet. I think it'll look pretty spectacular in paper. As far as Prosh, I think the big deal is the foiling treatment. Uh, the foil from Masters 25 is super expensive. It is almost $40 because it's the only foil edition. So even though normal costs like a $4 card, it is a popular commander and the unique foiling probably going to make it a pretty expensive open and a pretty in-demand card. Finally today, a couple of lower rarity reprints. Command Sphere, also coming with a promo, a full art extended promo. Command Tower, again, getting the promo treatment. These cards, not super expensive. They've been reprinted a lot, but they are super in demand. Some of the most played cards in the Commander format, and the promos are probably going to be pretty good opens. I think people are going to want to play these extended border versions in their decks, and I think that is all for Commander Legends for today. So Commander Legends, it is coming the beginning of November. It's a huge set. It's going to have a million legends. It's got partners. It's going to be, according to Wizards, more expensive than a normal booster, but less expensive than master sets, which uh, I'm hoping that means maybe like Modern Horizons. Maybe you're paying like six, eight dollars a pack. Maybe that'll be worth it. There are 20 cards in a pack. There are legends in each pack. Uh, so I think hopefully the price will work out, but we'll see. There's a big range between four dollars and like sixteen dollars. So we'll see where it falls. I think that's going to be a big deal. With this set but so far it looks pretty sweet i'm a little nervous about commanders but the reprints are sweet getting a lot of commander staples the new cards trying to fix card draw in white adding the rest of the battle bond lands really good additions to the format but we also got commander collection green so commander collection green it is a box set style product kind of like the old from the vault it is eight green cards quote unquote we'll talk about that as we go along but eight cards local game store exclusive releasing on december 5th and we kick things off with the two most exciting cards from commander collection green sylvan library and worldly tutor so sylvan library it's just a commander all trust staple i think it's the 15th most played green card in the format and that actually kind of undersells just how good sylvan library really is because i think like 10 of the top 15 cards are just rampant growth style ramp effects so if you look at non-ramp green cards in commander sylvan library is literally about as good as it gets it's really expensive like 65 bucks for the cheapest version and you get really sweet new art as well almost as impressive Impressive. Worldly Tutor. Worldly Tutor it hasn't been reprinted in like two decades. I think, what, 6th edition was the last time? So we're talking like 1990s since there have been more Worldly Tutors floating around. Worldly Tutor also very heavily played a top 30 green card in Commander, just tutoring up a creature, putting on top of your library, kind of a vampire tutor, except you don't lose life and you can only find a creature, but still a card that we desperately needed more reprints of, and this is the first time Worldly Tutor will ever come in foil. So if you pick up a Commander Collection green, you're going to get both of these cards. You're also going to get Bane of Progress with pretty sweet new art, Seedborn Muse with really sweet new art, and these cards not quite on the level of Sylvan Libraries, not quite on the level of Worldly Tutors, but still very good green cards in the top 100 most played in the format. Bane of Progress, I played in a lot of my Commander decks. Uh, in green decks, you can get away without playing many artifacts or enchantments a lot because you can ramp with your
your Cultivates, and your Far Seeks, and your Rampant Groves, and your Land of War Elves, and that means you can play Land of Progress, blow up all your opponent's mana rocks, all their artifacts, all their enchantments, and maybe not hurt yourself that much, and get a massive creature, and because Bane of Progress is a creature, you can tutor it up with your Worldly Tutor, for example, or your whatever, Court of Callings, Eldritch Evolutions, all the green creature tutors in the format. Seedborn Muse just makes a lot of mana and untaps all your stuff every single turn. Another card that you don't really need a ton of synergy for, although it does get better in like Simic style decks where you have shenanigans at instant speed. If you can be casting things at instant speed, being able to untap all your permanents on each player's untap step is incredibly powerful. It's essentially not just doubling up your mana, but kind of like quadrupling up your mana in a four player game and allowing you to attack, still have blockers back on defense. So another couple really solid reprints. Then we have are two commanders from Commander Collection Green. Fraley's Light of Wars Fury, 11th most played commander in green, 11th most played green commander in the commander format, and Omnath Locust of Rage, which is number four green commander. So Fraley's, very powerful card. It is narrow, though. It's pretty much an elf-style commander for the most part. You don't normally play it outside of elf tribal decks, uh, so you do need to kind of build around it a little bit. Omnath, it just makes a ton of mana, allowing you to tap all your mana and carry it over through turns is really powerful and it gets really big as well. So a couple of really solid commanders with new art of course in Commander Collection Green. Then we have kind of the weird card. So even though it's Commander Collection Green, we have two colorless cards that kind of have green-ish art on them. Soul Rig and Command Tower and I don't know how I feel about these ones. Like all the rest of the cards, the Sylvan Libraries, the Worldly Tutors, even the Frailies, the Bane of Progress, those are exactly the kind of cards that I would expect in something called Commander Collection Green. Sorry, Command Tower. I don't know. The upside is they are unique. You're getting different art that we've never had before, and they are kind of green-ish, I guess. You can see some green in the art, so maybe if you have a green deck, you want to play the green soul ring in your green deck or your green command tower. On the other hand, these are two cards that have been reprinted infinite amounts of time, to the point where they're just, I think command tower's under a dollar now, soul ring a couple of dollars, because it shows up every commander release. Tons of supplemental products. It's just reprinted and reprinted and reprinted. So I don't know. These are definitely the least valuable cards in the set. On the other hand, they are some of the most playable cards in the set. We were talking about most playable, like, green cards, most played green commanders. Solar and Command Tower are just, like, the most played cards in Commander, period. Not even considering colors, like, green decks, red decks, five-color decks, doesn't matter. You're just going to play these cards in your deck essentially 100% of the time. So Commander Collection Green, all together, eight cards... Sylvan Library, Worldly Tutor, very exciting. Brain of Progress, Seedborn Muse, eh, pretty interesting with Bane getting a first-time foil with really sweet new art. A couple of good legends to be your commanders, and then Soul Ring and Command Tower. The big question is, what is this going to cost? So I mentioned in the intro... Commander Collection Green is sort of like From the Vault, where this is a product that is exclusive to local game stores. I believe all local game stores can get non-foil versions, and then WPM Premium stores can also get foil versions. If you add up the value of just the cheapest version of these eight cards, it comes up to about $163, and that's for, remember, cheapest version, old art, not foil, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, so even with Soul Ring and Command Tower being pretty cheap, the $65 Sylvan Library, the $35 Worldly Tutor, a bunch of $10 to $20 reprints, uh, makes it a pretty valuable collection of cards, so I'm a little nervous. Uh, with From the Vaults, a lot of them were pretty low supply, and they sold for ridiculously high prices, like way more than MSRP, and now we don't even have MSRP, so I think that's the big sticking point with this set. I think this set's awesome. Uh, still a little questionable about the two colorless cards, but really, if you just look at these cards, it really is a lot of the most playable, most expensive, most in need of reprint cards in the green colors in all of Commander. So I feel like Wizards nailed it with designing this set. Super awesome product. The only question is going to be how much you got to pay for it. If you got to pay $200, $250, $300 to pick up a copy at your local game store, then it loses a bit of its appeal. This isn't a mass market, high supply, pick up a copy at Walmart for $20 type of product. Uh, even though it looks a little bit like Signature Spellbook Chandra, Signature Spellbook J, 
case, there really isn't. This is much more similar to From the Vault, so I'm a little nervous about how much this will cost. Check with your local game store and see. Hopefully you can pick one up at a good price. If you can get this for, I would say, $150, you're doing great. $100, uh, that's amazing. Even at $200, it's probably okay with all of the new art, uh, first-time foil, stuff like that. But if it's getting up to like $250, $300, uh, then I don't know. Even though it's got a lot of awesome cards, there is a price where it's just not worth it. So that's a big question. In general, though, Commander Collection Green, great reprints. Awesome new art, very playable cards that you're going to want for your Commander Collection. How much are you going to have to pay for it? That's the only question for the product. Anyway, that brings us to the end of our Commander Collection Green and Commander Legends Daily Spoiler for today. So, what do you think? What do you think about... Commander Legends. What do you think about the new cards? What do you think about the return of partners? How good is Keeper of the Accord? Is that finally going to fix card advantage in white? The return of the Battle Bond lands. How big are they? Sanger. What are you going to play that in? What do you want to partner it with? The lower rarity stuff, the reprints. How about Commander Collection Green? How much is it going to cost? It obviously has insane reprints. How much would you spend at your LGS to pick up a Commander Collection Green? Do you want the new Sylvan Library? Worldly Tutor? Bane of Progress and Foil? Let me know about that as well. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.